This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Nostalgia critic guy remember it so you don't have to. So what the hell is Alpha and Omega? Released in 2010, I've never even heard of this film outside of all the requests I've gotten for me to review it. So I looked it up and found it's not just a movie, it's surprisingly a franchise. The film made 25 million in America from a 20 million budget. Not great, but it also made 25 million in other countries, racking up a decent profit. So there's surprisingly a lot of straight to DVD sequels, seven to be exact, which got me thinking, maybe it's like the Land Before Time movies where people really like the first one and the sequels try to exploit it to death, no, maybe not. Nevertheless, this has accumulated a following. I'm not sure if it's a favorable following, but people do like to talk about it for some reason. Is it a film kids liked, a film kids hated, a film kids liked but then hated as adults? I can't entirely say. What I can say is, it's been 10 years since the film came out, everyone wants me to look at it, so that's what I'm gonna do today. So sit back and enjoy? We're gonna see what all the fuss is about with Alpha and Omega. It opens with a pack of wolves dog sledding. I too am astonished they didn't make that joke. And two sister wolves chasing each other. Hmm, I wonder if this was... Remember when movies had to be good to be good? It looks like this is Humphrey, played by Justin Long. And this is Kate, played by Hayden Pantier. And just to be clear, no, this is not one of the direct-to-DVD movies. This actually is the animation for a cinematic release. It's like if the Norm of the North team did Balto, it has very little detail. Well, except for a few specific areas. I think I'm seeing why this has a following. Honey, what are you doing in there? I'm just figuring things out, Ma! Well, I can help you figure things out. What are you watching? Alpha and Omega! You're right, you can figure that one out on your own. It looks like Kate is going to Alpha school, leaving Humphrey behind. She will be a trained Alpha. You'll be a clever Omega. Learn to keep the peace. I feel like I'm watching someone's personal collection. I don't know of what, just it's a personal collection. Time goes by as Humphrey comes across Kate again, but he also has to stay away because she's an Alpha and he's an Omega, and they're not allowed to be romantically involved. Set your sights over there, the vegetarians. Oh, that old vegetarian cliche that they like to eat berries that are fed to them by squirrels and have weird smiles. It's 2020, I thought we were past this! But two other wolves attack their prey while Kate leads her pack by bringing up the rear in support. This causes a stampede and Kate leaps in to save her friends. Whoa! Wolves are furious <laughs> because their prey got away and they start fighting. So Humphrey comes in to calm things down. Come on, the caribou are laughing at us. Oh, oh, now that's a moon I don't want to howl to. <laughs> it's funny because poops and farts come out of my ear. Get back to the den. So I guess the Alpha's jobs are to lead and the Omega's jobs are to be the peacekeepers. No wonder so many wolves carry copies of Emmanuel Kant. Kate's mother has a Strange reaction, to say the least. The Eastern Wolves ruined Kate's hunt. <sighs> the Omegas were there to break up the fight. Oh. Beware, she comes with a terrible curse. <sighs> but she also comes with a free froget. Oh. Food is tight as their leader, Winston, played by Danny Glover, is getting upset that the neighboring pack is stealing their food and attacking their clan. Candu was jumped. Whoever did this, let's rip his tail off and shove it down his throat. Okay, I'd say get her some medication, but she's the most entertaining character so far. Winston meets with the leader of the warring pack, Tony, played by Dennis Hopper, as they plan to unite the packs by having Kate and his son Garth wed. 
I won't let my pack starve, Winston. If we have to, we'll fight for the valley. See, this is why he's cemented as a great actor. Oh, not because this is a groundbreaking performance. I mean, all great actors have to die, with their last film being light years beneath their talents. Garth knows his responsibility. Does Kate? Kate understands that she has to marry Garth, who she will meet that night at the Moonlight Howl. I understand. It's... it's my responsibility. But all this heavy stuff doesn't have to get in the way of our boys getting ready to strut. <laughs> You know, for a starving pack, how is that one so pleasantly plump? Even Kate gets dolled up for the big night, which to a wolf means putting a flower in your ear. It's the tramp stamp of the dog world. If Garth gets out of line, go for the throat and don't let go until the body stops shaking. Okay, seriously, are any of these DVD sequels titled Mother Eats Her Own? The Moonlight Howl begins and... <laughs> It's rare that I say this, but someone spent way too much time animating this. <sighs> okay, if you just showed me some of these clips alone, I probably wouldn't think twice about it. But going from wolves mostly walking on all fours to that orgy dance from Matrix Reloaded does stand out a little bit. You see that? She did the sucky sucky thing! Play it again! You see? Sucky sucky! How do people give shit for sex being written in Lion King, yet this gets a free pass? Wow, this is a new feeling. Please explore it privately. Kate arrives to the ceremony too, and... Kate is hot. Stop trying to make me into this! If this is your thing, fine. I don't care. You do you. But if this kind of stuff continues, we're gonna have to put censor bars on these characters. Kate sees Garth, and at first, it may not be too bad. They both seem attracted to each other, but Humphrey cock blocks and tries to put the moves on her himself. Wow, you are a... you are a big one. Wow, you're, uh, practically a moose. <laughs> Do I even have to with that one? Kate goes along with Garth, though, and discovers his howl is so bad it shoots birds down mid-flight. Yeah, okay, th that's pretty funny. <laughs> I, uh, I need some water. I'll, I'll just, just, uh, keep, keep my vocal, vocal cords, cords warm. <laughs> yeah. So you see, the moral girls is if your boyfriend's a bad singer, he has no redeemable qualities, and you should dump him even if it means letting your people starve. It's cool, a movie with this told you it was okay. Ah! 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 Future Alpha all the way. Both of them, though, get shot with darts and are captured by hunters. The hunters set them loose miles away, though, where they come across other animals who seem to enjoy playing golf. He's using the wrong club. Could you do me a favor, Needles, and, um, shut the hole that makes the words? Like I said, there's a good laugh every here and there. Actually, both these birds are pretty funny. This is not a lie if you're French. French, Canadian. There's a, there's a slash. I said French. Canadian. French. Canadian. There's a quiet sophistication to them that, frankly, I didn't think was possible in this film. And they get some good chuckles. I have not seen many wolves in these parts, but I am not afraid of wolves. No. I like wolves. For some reason, my kind is always teamed up with them. With outrageous accents, you silly king! He tries flying away, but Humphrey chases him, resulting in near moose butt. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> I love how they act like they're above that joke, even though this imagery is totally fine. They find out they've been moved to Idaho for reasons that honestly should not surprise you. You were relocated to, um, repopulate. Ah! You know, for the strong alpha in this, her main goal seems to be find a dude to fuck. The two birds say they might be able to get them back home after their massage. And they say Cora was the first animated gay icon. And it's about responsibilities, so I don't expect you to understand. We've toured it many times. I dated a pintail from Jasper once. Up, oh, that one killed him. If not, either way, that thing is definitely haunting my nightmares. <laughs> they approach a vehicle with the in-joke every animator gets hard for and see an unusual couple driving it. He was in a motorcycle gang, and she was a librarian. It was a bookstore that also sold beer. So, they met. Okay, I like these two. They distract from the imagery that had me asking why I liked Minerva Mink so much. In the way every growing boy did. God, that shoulder can get it. Hi there!
there. I'm Buster. Wow. Well, I'm Chaplin. Hello, Chaplin. It's good to be here. It's good to be here, too. Even though my name is not here, it's Chaplin. Well, what do we do here, Chaplin? Mostly sit around while our master films us and literally puts words in our mouths. Wow. Like what? Things that people paid good money for to get the word out about. Oh, you mean like stamps.com? No. Wait. Yes. Wow. What kind of things is he going to have us say? Things like, for all our sakes, we need to avoid crowds any way we can right now. But what if you need to go to the post office? What if you need postage to send out letters and packages? Oh, no, I'm scared. Don't worry, Buster. There's Stamps.com. Hooray! What's Stamps.com and who am I again? You're Buster, and with Stamps.com, you can print postage on demand and skip those lines and crowds at the post office. Can you actually save money with the discounts you can't even get at the post office? What a random thing to say, but yes! Stamps.com also offers UPS services with discounts up to 62% and no UPS residential surcharges. Tell me more! Or don't. Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer in the safety and comfort of your own home, office, or anywhere else you're hunkering down right now. So whether you're a small business sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or just working from home and need to mail stuff, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease? You are bizarrely knowledgeable about Stamps.com, but yes. But how, Uncle, Father, or Brother Chaplin, does it work? Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just leave it for your mail carrier, schedule a free package pickup, or drop it in a mailbox. No human contact required. It's that simple. I'm getting a telepathic message that you get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 62% off shipping rates. Well, whoever's violating your senses is correct. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, especially now, saving you time and money and keeping you safe in these crazy times. I'm also receiving a telepathic message that- No, you're not. You're just reading the script. But that's not as much fun. Can't I pretend mind powers are a thing? Oh, all right. Hooray, right now you watching at home can get a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Tell them how it's done, kid. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in nostalgia. That's stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in nostalgia for your special Say, you're really good at this. No, I'm not. You're right. Oh. Stay safe, my friends. And use stamps.com today. One day, I'm going to be a full-grown dog. What? Don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall just having a good time. Hope to see you there. Humphrey, get a ride and leave the birds behind. Boo! You were the James Woods to this movie's Hercules. Kate's sister, Lily, played by Christina Ritchie, agrees to show Garth around until Kate hopefully returns. You want to see something an alpha can do? Uh, would my mother approve? No mother would approve of most of this film. Oh, speaking of which. <gasps> you got $20 million to make a deviant art a movie. Humphrey really has to pee, though, causing them to lose their ride. How is he gonna make up for screwing them both over? Rain, rain, go away, get out of here, rain. It's, uh, it's a rain dance to stop it from raining. Duh. Just then, the two birds run him over with the trailer, and it's their movie now. Oh, come on, how come other people's fantasies clearly get to come true in this? No. Kate falls off a cliff, which, listening to him, I'd probably do the same. And Humphrey swings in to save her. But let's get to who's really saving the day here. What do we have here? Right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. May I say that was a stupendous shot. You may, and it was pretty good, wasn't it? Very indeed, sir, indeed. Sadly, they're not on screen very long as they tell them they can catch a train on the other side of the mountain. The other side of that mountain. Daddy, please. I, I, Come on. No, please, teach us etiquette, sing us a song, do your own soft porno, just keep us entertained. Tease me with threats of their deaths. I know there's a million sequels. They're gonna live. Ah! They find the train at the same time. They anger some bears, but they escape and get aboard just on time. Oh, come on, Kate. Howl at the moon with me. Okay, so something interesting happens here. Back at the pack, Lily and Garth form a bit of a romance, literally at the same time as Kate and Humphrey. And despite them being on screen for far less time, the side characters have the better romance. They're both kind of awkward, but find charm in each other's strengths. He shows her how to hunt, which we've seen she's bad at, and she shows him how to howl, which we know he's bad at. 
They spark very quickly despite being opposites, and they're actually kind of cute together. With the main leads, they are constantly fighting, constantly name-calling, constantly making it clear why they shouldn't be together. Even when both couples howl at the same time, it means nothing for these two. It's just something they're doing together, where with the other two, it's actually nice seeing her help him, and even funny when he squirms thinking he's going to kill these birds with his voice and then doesn't. I don't know why people think romances where characters hate each other is romantic, because as you can see here, characters being romantic is romantic. Fucking weird, right? Gar's father sees him flirting with Lily, though, and calls the marriage off, deciding to take the valley by force for themselves. It's the full moon, Winston. I can see that. Toby. It just hit me. Toby's not an intimidating name. But the vegetarians, yeah, remember them? Try to stop the violence just to remind you they were characters in this movie. And yeah, they never show up again after this scene. Stop the insanity! Go organic! Stop the insanity! Go organic! Well, they're no Wayne Brady from Food Fight, and thank God for that. Now that they're almost home, Humphrey tries admitting his true feelings for Kate. These past couple of days, they've been kind of... fun. I mean, imagining my pack being killed, especially as an alpha, it's hard not to laugh in these times. Speaking of which, Kate sees the warring packs and jumps off the train to try and stop them. We were taken by humans. We were supposed to repopulate. No, 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 Mom! You've officially made my list. Kate agrees to marry Garth and unite the packs, of course, breaking Humphrey's heart. Just wanted to say goodbye. Goodbye? Yeah, I'm thinking about doing a little traveling, seeing where the train takes me. I hear there are several beautiful cliffs I can jump off of. Despite Kate and Garth being in love with someone else, they both decide to go through with the ceremony. What's happening? They're accepting each other's scent. Oh, and now the nibble on the ears? Oh, Jesus, I know where this is going. Please cut away! Oh, thank God. We were two seconds away from Cat Rebel Wilson doing Spread Eagle. While Humphrey makes his way to the train, Kate finally admits she can't marry Garth because she's in love with him. I'm <laughs> Alpha in love with an Omega. That's against pack law. I also am in love with an Omega. Yup, guess who's coming to dinner in this? Two biggest barrier breakers in romantic cinema. This isn't our way! Toby orders his pack to attack, causing yet another stampede. What even spooked them? A noise from distant predators they want to run towards rather than away? Humphrey! We have to help them. Let me try! Just hand me the controller! We are looking at a video game, right? Of course, our heroes use a sled, providing them with cover. But what about Kate and Humphrey? Oh, they're fine, I guess. Funny, I thought they'd be in more danger crawling towards them as something like... <laughs> that could happen. Anyone notice she's a really shitty alpha? And he hasn't kept the peace at all. These two losers deserve each other. Kate, please, you can't do this. Oh, look at that. She's really gone, guys. Guess we'll have to throw her a funeral tonight. Even your funerals are like this? God! No, they just rip off far and away by zooming back in, showing her eyes open. Kate. My interest in you being alive is a four? No, no, let's go with a three. You. And down to a two. I was really hoping you were dead, I'm not gonna lie. Let's celebrate with another orgy! No, oh, they must have gotten a different animator. This isn't nearly as sexualized as before. Yeah, maybe when the first guy finally learned animation, he left a CG Lola bunny naked. Just a guess, but I think there's more in favor of that outcome than against. And there you go, that was Alpha and Omega. I expected somehow less and more at the same time. Alpha and Omega, not a very good movie, but I can't really say it's a very bad movie either. With the exception of those specifically animated moments, which granted are very out of nowhere. <laughs> the movie's rather bland and run of the mill. The story and characters aren't that original, and the animation's nothing spectacular, but it's not insulting or aggravating to watch. There's one or two jokes that got a chuckle out of me, and the ones that didn't aren't painful, for the most part. They're just forgettable. I guess if a kid wanted to watch this movie, I wouldn't see anything wrong with it. I feel like it's a movie children would have on in the background, and chances are that's the kind of movie it was intending to be. A small little kid's flick. 
I've seen a lot worse, and yeah, honestly, even a lot weirder, so this one doesn't register too high as anything particularly great or awful. It's just there. Yeah, that's what I can say about Alpha and Omega. It's just there. Not a glowing review, but not a bad one either. It's just something that happened and I'll probably forget about in the near future. Take it for what's worth and see for yourself. Although I will say, it is a shame I didn't get a chance to see it in 3D, though... Honestly, would that have saved anything? I mean, imagine that. Everybody loving a movie just for the 3D and the visuals. What the hell have you people been smoking out there? <laughs> You are a big one. Wow, you're uh, practically a moose. Hey, Doug Walker here, doing the charity shout-out. Sorry the lighting's not that great. I actually got to the charity shout-out a little late this time, so I apologize. But, uh, uh, yeah, the one we are doing uh, this week, once again, it's one we've done before, but it does uh, tie into COVID-19. Uh, it's a really wonderful charity called Save the Children. And this is an organization that goes to uh, any kind of uh, tragic event, catastrophe, I mean, whether it be a natural disaster or um, a pandemic, like what's going on now, and specifically tries to help children that have been affected by it, whether it be physically, psychologically, emotionally, uh, they go in and they try their best to help as many children as possible. And of course, uh, COVID-19 is still, you know, going pretty strong here. So uh, they're specializing in helping children who either uh, have caregivers who have been affected by it, uh, they've been affected by it, uh, you know, children out of work or can't even get an education uh, because of it, depending on where they are. So all these different factors uh, and like I said, we've done a, ch a shout out for this charity before. It's really wonderful. Uh, so uh, if you want to help them out or again, I mean, you can look into seeing if uh, uh, you want to volunteer at all. Uh, this is just a really, really good organization. Check it out. See what you can do. Take care.